Hi, I'm Vanya, and today I'm excited to dig into the low power modes of uh, Cellular IoT. And I'm going to do this together with David from Thales. Hi, David. Hi, Vanya. So let's get right into this. Um, David is Thales expert on automotive and low power modules. Uh, so David, the uh, IoT device with connectivity via cellular network assumes the usage of CAT-M or narrowband IoT technologies. Uh, to ensure energy efficiency and long battery life, both use so-called power save modes, which are specified by 3GPP. Uh, can you tell us a bit about these modes and are there any differences in the modes between CATAM and Airband IoT? And what do you really need to do to take care of this when you're working with this type of technology? Um, for CAT-M and narrowband IoT, these are, at, at the first thing, is they are not really competing technologies. So both, as you mentioned, were introduced in 3GPP, release 13, and there are a few things that are really crucial to understand why both technologies have different power consumption itself, uh, even when they have the, uh, the same EDRX and PSM power saving modes. So basically, um, let me give you a quick overview about this. So for example, um, CAT-M itself has, for example, um, even some features like audio and mobility. It has higher throughput, a higher bandwidth, and but all this comes together, especially like the bandwidth and the throughput, somehow with a higher current consumption itself. Both have, in a power saving perspective, the same PSM and EDRX. So therefore, um, this is like from the technical side, these are the power modes. Um, it is also one important aspect to understand that CAT-M and NB is not available everywhere. So it is rather a new technology, even if it, it's already rolled out um, largely in Europe and in the US, for example. But the US focused, for, for example, more on the CAT-M and Europe more on NB. This will definitely change over the time. So we have also in Europe now the first uh, KTM networks because it always depends. Both have a few benefits and disadvantages and you can basically not say this is a better technology because it always depends on really the application use case. Right, understood. So this really does depend on the country which you are, where you're deploying the network operator, the user case. Uh, good. So. You know, I'm interested into the a little bit of the details of the power modes. Can you um, explain a little bit more about EDRX and PSM and um, how do they really work? We can we can take it on a high level to begin with. So basically, what we see here, it's like a power consumption over the time, um, and this represents somehow um, KDM and NB both because these power saving modes, as mentioned, are in both technologies. So in the beginning, in the gray box, we see basically that this is like the power up, start up, registering to the network itself. And then we have basically the tau, so the black one um, timer and the active time timer that the, we are typing actively in, or the microcontroller is communicating these timers to the module itself. So the module is transmitting it to the network and negotiating them. Um, you can imagine when you have 100,000 different uh, devices on the same cell and, and all devices will transmit the same timer at the same time, of course, then this cannot really work out. So the network is really dynamically scheduling and answering you, okay, you can go now to sleep for this in this period. Um, to really go a little bit deeper into this, so we have our tau, which is like the overall um, um, which includes then the active time and the PSM. So the PSM is a new mode that got introduced um, and it is um, really like the, uh, the lowest power mode that you, or the lowest power that you can achieve. So basically the module cannot be reached by the network, so everything is shut down and the module falls into this PSM mode and waits until the timer that got negotiated with the network expires and wakes up. And there's one big difference. So of course, there's a case where you can shut down the module and of course restart the module register again. But in the PSM mode, um, the cool thing is that you are instantly again on the network. So you do not need this registration phase, which can take a while with network scan and everything. Um, in terms of current consumption in a PSM mode, we are really talking from two to three microamp uh, range. Mm -hmm. And so as the second timer, we are setting up the active time. This is like how we are setting up the DRX. And now it is the E at DRX, so the extended 
um, DRX cycle. That means in usual LTE CAT1 and higher, we have like the periodic DRX cycle. So on a module level, the receiver is turned on and listening periodically to um, the network. And now with the extended, because we do not have like voice where we need continuously somehow listening and react really quickly because CATM and NB is rather uh, for data only and for some sensoric stuff, for example, um, we are listening only in paging time windows. And these paging time windows, when you would now take the average over the paging time window and the EDRX floor, of course, the current consumption is lower. And with the active time, with the timers, you can freely configure, even some mostly freely configure then really the, the period, how long you are listening and in which distances. It would be really, really cool to see this in reality. How do you really work with these? Like, can you, can you guide us through like a quick setup and show how these modes really work from the power uh, perspective? Of course. So we got here our LGA dev kit. The first thing what I do is putting in the frame to fit the ENS22 inside. Our ENS22 is a narrowband IoT module. And so I'm placing the lid, pressing the, the, it a little bit down. And so the module is connected. Um, a second, I need to connect, of course, a narrowband capable SIM card. Um, I took already off one of the jumpers to connect later the OT. And yeah, what we need is of course an antenna to connect to the network. So I connected to the main interface. Now I'm connecting the USB cable, which is powering um, the dev kit itself. Um, of course, plus over an FDI is a serial connection. Now I need to connect the um, OT, the banana cables, so one ground and one 3.75 volt wire to power only the module itself. So this is how the setup looks like. And now I can simply press on button. I um, see also that the LED on the OT is flashing and basically I'm ready to operate. So as first thing, I'm now turning on the OT um, the powering, turning on the device and I immediately see that the module is starting with a sysstart. What we also have seen um, in the background is that the module is now restarting and registering. I already get the first URCs. So let's type in ATE and we see, okay, it's the ENS22. Um, we check the SIM pin. Ah, the SIM is already ready because we have no SIM pin set on the SIM card. And now we can set up a few commands. So the CPSM for the tau, the active time, so the EDRX. Um, so how to calculate these timers, basically, we will discuss in a separate video in detail and also how to do the calculation. And what we now nicely see in this video already, um, that the module is already registered and already in this lower power mode. So we see the, um, nicely the paging time windows where the receiver is turned on. In the beginning, we see a little bit higher peaks. So the module is basically um, registering to the network, negotiating the timers. And now we turned off RTS and there we see, so the serial connection is now disconnected that we drop even a little bit more with the current consumption. So from the milliamp range to the microamps between the paging time windows. And now after a short time, but yeah, let's check out first the um, paging time windows. So the timers that we set are okay. So we can really verify that this is working. And based on that, we can really do a calculation. So an estimation of the battery lifetime. And so we see already that the module is falling into the PSM mode where we are reaching really low current. We were talking about the impact from the device and what you can change at the device side, but we also understand that there is a huge impact on the network side and different operators, they have different settings. So this kind of default current curve that you would see in Naughty when you measure will look very different in uh, different networks. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, so yeah, as mentioned, so it is a regional thing and of course the, the different network operators have um, different strategies of the deployment itself um, and therefore the timers are a little bit different. So with narrowband, you have a little bit longer power period, for example, 
but from the network perspective, um, of course, it's not from one to the other day that everything is um, deployed and works perfectly. So some network operators have like fixed timers so that you can go with your active time for, for a dedicated period or even some features like EDRX, for example, are not available now on this network, but on another network. Yeah, so you need to really understand what network you're deploying in and what you can measure during the, uh, these different measurements that you're going to be doing during the development project, right? And uh, yes. with, with that said, what would be your uh, recommendation when and where to actually uh, measure power during the project development? We see quite often the people uh, might not do it often enough, right? So how often should, should your customers measure and uh, how should they start measuring and where? Basically, on my experience, so what we are doing within the company and also what our or my customers are doing, um, they need tooling. So this is for sure. So the OT is a perfect affordable device for that. It is easy to use. Um, of course, our LGA dev kit, uh, we prepared it especially for current measurements. So you can really only with two cables connected um, and you can start instantly measuring. Um, of course, there are always like the R&D measurements, verification measurements um, for that. The, this is like the standard use case. But what is really a crucial point, especially on the application level, is whenever a firmware change is happening on a module, for example, or also on a, uh, on a host controller of the customer application, um, you need to really to be sure before you deploying this uh, firmware update or upgrade um, that nothing changed on the current consumption. And also an important aspect is, is the verification, not only in the lab, but also in the field. So if you have CAD-M and a track and trace device, for example, um, you really need to make sure at the end that in the field you have the coverage with CAD-M or are you deciding, okay, what strategy do I need to apply in my software, for example, um, when I have a 2G fallback? Um, and therefore, um, there's not really a case where you can skip somehow the measurement. So you need to do it from the verification phase to the development, through the deployment, and even uh, further for the, the whole product lifecycle. Finally, if a customer wants to quickly do uh, some kind of uh, concept or proof of concept, what kind of setup would you recommend for them? So, of course, they can easily purchase our LGA dev kit. It is prepared, ready to use. Um, but for, for proof of concept, you sometimes want to connect different things with each other. That means a host application or a host process or some sensoric stuff. And for that, we have, um, for example, with our partner Micro E, um, the clickboards. So there we have the ENS22, which is a N NB module. And we will also have quite soon the EX82 clickboards, so CADM, NB, and 2G fallback. And with that, you can plug it in on your preferred host application with some other sensors and basically also measure current. So we prepared it especially to connect it and make the verification even on that small, small proof of concept. And of course, uh, having a naughty to measure all of these, very, very important, right? True. <laughs> all right. So thank you, David, for these insights. And uh, uh, please, all of you, stay tuned to more of these videos where we're going to be digging much deeper into these different uh, low power modes of cellular IoT. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you, Vanya.